the first day I walked into the room and saw a room filled with these looms, it just clicked for me. I think it's the space of invention for me, so it's like where I get to take the things that I've just been dreaming up and sort of make them physical. I think the meditative process of it all, how just repeating a stitch or a line can sort of accumulate to this thing that we are also familiar with and that we have some sort of cultural relationship with. And I think that's what keeps me engaged and excited and looking for new ways to make it communicate. I mean, I think that there are days where it's hard and every inch is like a battle. But then there are times where it's like, you know, four hours kind of melt away and I'm like, oh, it's, it's dark outside. <laughs> The freedom quotes really inspire the show because I heard these stories that folks who are enslaved use these quilts to navigate their way to freedom along the, the Underground Railroad. And that embedded in each pattern were these sort of directives or symbols that might tell someone uh, which direction to go, what trail to follow, how to dress, where to hide, where food and shelter might be was this great jumping off spot for me to think about ways that people have used textiles to signify or to quietly speak to each other. Then the ways that black folks are still thinking through police brutality and how to just be safe in your own body. Queer folks have also had this history of trying to, to signal to each other um, and to not signal so much to the world. Personally, I belong to all of these groups of folks who are trying to f navigate the world safely. The poses for me are sort of in conversation with dance but also thinking about what the body is capable of expressing in weaving and in silhouette. I am always interested when more than one figure shows up in the work, what those figures are, are doing to each other or saying to a viewer. Been interested in thinking about this building on these kind of departed queer ancestors like Essex Hemphill. There are these figures, some of which are, are kind of erupting from the, the tapestry or sort of reaching out towards the skies or in these kind of ecstatic moments of kind of joy or self-revelry. always trying to get these figures to sort of feel like they're transcendent, but then they're sort of, you know, bound within this kind of six by six or eight by eight box of space. Myth has always been this intense interest of mine. I remember being read all of these Bible stories when I was a child the fantastical images that those stories paint uh, have always been there for me. I wanted to find other craft processes that would lend themselves to these kind of fantastical narratives. So I really started to think about 
how could I employ baskets uh, as a tool for kind of self-liberation? Um, and for me, it was like, well, if you can make a basket big enough, could you float away in it? And is this something that one could do in a clandestine manner and, and, or in plain sight? I want the baskets to start to make some of these myths feel possible. Like that these things aren't just stories we tell ourselves, but that there is the possibility uh, through making, through craft, to actualize these things. It was important to take the baskets back into nature to speak to how folks have been dispossessed from nature. I think that there's so much power there and so much peace. 